Nuclear submarines today are not only a means of attack, but also a symbol of strategic power, capable of changing the balance of power anywhere on the planet. A special place among them is occupied by the Virginia class with Block V submarines, which incorporate the most ambitious engineering solutions. Today, we'll tell you why this modernization is so important for the fleet and how submarines of this class can surprise their opponents. Lately, there have been increasingly loud voices that the United States is facing the threat of the extinction of its submarines. The U.S. nuclear submarine fleet numbered 140 boats during the Cold War, and wherever Soviet submarines went, they found themselves being monitored and tracked by U.S. submarines. Today, the U.S. submarine fleet consists of 69 submarines, only 50 of which are of the hunter-killer fast attack category. Moreover, 20 of these 50 submarines are in dry dock or simply tied to piers due to the Navy's three-year lag in maintenance. And the Navy itself, in assessing the structure of its forces back in 2016, came to the conclusion that it needed 66 attack submarines. Added to this is the fact that not a single completely new shipyard has been built in a century and the private sector has only modernized existing sites. In short, no matter how you look at it, it's all negative. But is it really that sad? In fact, submarines remain the most secretive component of the U.S. nuclear triad. See for yourself. Land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles can easily be attacked. Nuclear bombers can be attacked too. And what about submarines? How realistic is it to destroy them quickly? Well, it's quite realistic. If only the ocean suddenly became transparent. This is why ballistic missile submarines, often referred to as boomers, have been and remain the most reliable deterrent components. Thinking about this, former Vice Admiral Michael J. Connor, commander of the United States Submarine Forces, correctly noted that it's easier to find a grapefruit-sized object in space than a submarine at sea. And this is despite the fact that the length of the average boomer is almost equal to two football fields. So despite widespread skepticism over the past 50 plus years, the U.S. has advanced so much in submarine technology and undersea security that its boats are now undetectable by either Russia or China. Additionally, the U.S. Navy continues to invest heavily to ensure that its submarines remain the most advanced on the oceans. Of these, almost a third are Virginia-class nuclear attack submarines with cruise missiles that have been in service with the U.S. Navy for over 20 years. The class was originally developed in the late 1980s as part of the U.S. Navy's Centurion Concept Initiative to develop a replacement for the Los Angeles class and a cheaper alternative to the Seawolf class, which was canceled after only three were completed, costing taxpayers an insane $13 billion, instantly making them some of the most expensive nuclear submarines in U.S. history. In 1991, Centurion became the new SSN, NSSN, which seven years later became the more familiar name for us, the Virginia class. Taking a cue from its less fortunate fleet mate, Seawolf, Virginia quickly figured out the direction it needed to go and used a lot of commercial off-the-shelf COTS components, especially in its computers and data networks. This helped cut production costs significantly, bringing them well below the projected $1.8 billion per sub at least at launch. Where there are new boats, there are also many innovations. Virginia became something of a Gerald R. Ford for aircraft carriers, bringing dozens of innovations that had never been seen before in any class of U.S. submarines. Virginia was the first class to feature a common mast design called the Universal Modular Mast, UM, although the very first UM was installed on the USS Memphis, a Los Angeles-class submarine. It includes snorkel mast, two photonic masts, two communication masts, one or two high data rate satellite communication, SATCOM masts, enabling communication at super high frequency for downlink and extremely high frequency for uplink range. Radar mast carrying AN BPS-16 surface search and navigation radar, electronic warfare mast AN BLQ-10 electronic support measures used to detect, analyze, and identify both radar and communication signals from ships aircraft, submarines, and land-based transmitters. The Virginia class also pioneered the use of photonic sensors in place of the traditional periscope. The submarines received high-resolution cameras, light intensification sensors, infrared sensors, an infrared laser rangefinder, and an integrated electronic support measures ESM array. Previous periscope designs required them to penetrate the submarine's pressure hole, reducing its structural integrity and increasing the risk of flooding 
and required the submarine's control room to be located just below the fin. Photonic masts, on the other hand, do not penetrate the pressure hole and allow the control room to be moved to a position inside the pressure hole without requiring it to be located in a specific section of the submarine. But because the photonic masts looked so different from the usual periscopes, the U.S. Navy was faced with the unexpected task of camouflaging them by installing low-profile photonics masts LPPM, which are much more reminiscent of traditional submarine periscopes. After all, no one would want their enemy to be able to immediately determine what kind of submarines in front of them, even visually. Instead of a traditional bladed propeller, Virginia has been fitted with Bay Systems water jets developed for the British Swiftsure submarines. They reduce the risk of steam bubbles forming in the water due to the extreme pressure drop across the propellers when they spin too fast, also known as cavitation, and generally make the class of boats quieter. In terms of system architecture, the Virginia is similar to the F-35 fighter jets in their flexibility. The class has an open system architecture which allows for the rapid introduction of new hardware and software as they become available. These improvements are divided into two parts, technology insertions every four years and advanced processor builds every two years. The original Virginias were 377 feet long, 34 feet wide, and displaced 7,800 tons submerged but the latest Block V models have improved significantly, growing to 461 feet in length and displacing 10,200 tons. Overall, since the launch of the lead ship SSN 774 Virginia, the class has become many times more dangerous to enemies. Although the first models were already quite powerful, having 12 Tomahawk Vertical Launch System VLS launchers for attacking land targets with four torpedo tubes for torpedoes or MK-48 mines. In Block 3, the single-purpose VLS cruise missile launchers were replaced by two multi-purpose six-missile Virginia payload tubes VPT launchers, but the biggest update awaits these submarines in Block V, which has already been dubbed floating missile batteries. The fact is that all submarines built since 2019 received an additional Virginia payload module VPM section in the middle of the hull, which increased their length by 70 feet at once. Mounted inside the VPM are four more VPTs of the same diameter but taller, each carrying up to seven Tomahawk missiles, making them an excellent replacement for the decommissioned Ohio-class submarines that have been converted to nuclear-powered guided missile submarines (SSGNs). This brings the number of missiles in the Block V boats to 40. With dozens of subsonic Tomahawks capable of striking targets a thousand miles or more away and the prospect of even more advanced hypersonic missiles, the Virginia class will be able to strike deep into enemy territory from distant waters. Although no matter how many missiles a submarine has, its main advantage over such naval giants as the supercarrier Ford, which carries about 100 aircraft, still remains that Ford cannot launch them while underwater and remaining invisible to enemies, but Virginia can. The VPM could also potentially carry non-nuclear ballistic missiles and unmanned underwater vehicles, but both solutions are ultimately limited by budget. However, like any innovation from the U.S. services, right? The U.S. Navy intends to receive 12 Block V submarines and has already announced the purchase of the first three Block VI submarines, data on which, unfortunately, has not yet been disclosed to us. But what's more interesting is that, according to public budget documents, the Virginia submarines are planned to be equipped with a high-energy laser weapon with a power of 300 to 500 kilowatts built into the photon mast. Considering the submarine's powerful 30-megawatt reactor and the previous very successful experience of testing the first prototypes of laser weapons on board the American ships USS Ponce, USS Portland, and USS Pebble with a power of 30 to 150 kilowatts, we may well see the first lasers on Virginia-class submarines as early as the mid-2030s. Do you think submarines need lasers, or would it be better for them to focus on good old missiles? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.